Okay, welcome and thank you very much everybody for joining us this morning or this afternoon as the case may be. The topic of this webinar today is going to be direct to garment for sign in large format businesses. My name is Joe Longton. I'm the marketing director for Amajet. And also, um, as a bonus surprise, joining me is Andy Buckles. Andy is the owner of Eastern Shore Signs based in Cape Charles, Virginia. Thanks for joining me, Andy. No problem. Glad to be here. So what we're talking about today is um, uh, an overview of the direct to garment industry and what the market opportunity is. Some of the common challenges that sign and large format vendors and even folks who are doing commercial printers who are trying to do a one size or a one stop shop type of business for printing, the common challenges that they have and how they could solve them with direct to garment printing. We'll do a little bit of product overview of the Empower and Sprint digital apparel printers. These, these are our top two um, print product lines at Anajet. We'll look at an economics, which is essentially how do you calculate your return on investment and payoff time. And we're going to look at a handful of success stories, folks who are very successful sign shop owners and folks who have multiple different printing technologies uh, in their in their uh, where in their uh, in their shops, and uh, um, some folks are even taking them on the road. And then I'll briefly cover who might not be a fit for direct to garment. During the entire presentation, I encourage everybody to please, if you have questions, go ahead and enter it into the question uh, bar that's showing up on your console on your computer screen. So why look at direct to garment? Well, we happen to know that digital apparel printing is really the future, and this is the direction that not just individual shops are moving in, but also large fulfillment companies are moving in this direction. Corporations, um, you may have seen kiosks around where um, at malls or at uh, uh, entertainment venues where people are able to order quote unquote custom shirts. But we also know that all imaging businesses, even looking at signs, promotional products, or retail, you have to diversify your offerings or you're going to die out. If a customer comes to you and they say, I want A, B, and C, and you have to say no to B and C, the customer is not likely to come back to you. There's always pricing pressure on all products and service offerings. The expectation of the market is very high. And uh, you know from quoting jobs that there's also competition out there. And now the competition is not just the folks across the street, but it's also on the web. Folks are ordering. Um, their products from vendors who are located a thousand miles away or down at the other end of the state and they know that they could get it shipped a couple days later and they're willing to do that because they're able to shop for it through the web. And also probably uh, not the least reason why you want to look at direct to garment is because that's where the profit is. So let me move forward here. So let me ask you a question, Andy, while we're on this. What, why did you look at direct to garment? What was the thing that made you uh, um, take a closer look at it? Pretty much what you just explained. Um, <laughs> being a science shop, uh, location where I am, it's, it's, you have to be diversified in order to, to, make, to make it work. Um, small population, not highly densely populated over here. And this just happened the other day. I was doing, a guy came in, I was recommended by a screen printer to do you know, a handful of shirts because economically it just wouldn't be, you know, cost effective to do a screen printing with all the screen charges and everything else. And he shows up and I gave him a little tour. Of course, I have screen printing equipment myself. And it turned out I'm, I'm getting sign work out of it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't realize it was like a package deal. So not only did I do 15 shirts. I got a, you know, a couple of banners and a couple of yard signs and um, a few other things. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it worked out perfect. So my <laughs> my margins just went right up because I just picked up three, four more things that had nothing to do with t-shirts. Wow, that's awesome. It's it's uh, um, one hand feeding the other. It's it, and I hear that from a lot of folks who uh, start off from embroidery or from screen printing, and they're they they find that they're getting screen printing business as a result of the the customer originally came into them through having an individual or maybe a, a short run of, of custom shirts. Yes. Same, yeah, I had that same thing happen. Another thing happened the other day. I was a uh, customer out in Colorado basically called me up to do some static cling uh, stuff for car windows. 
mm-hmm. and basically turned into I'm probably going to be picking all their shirt orders up. And this is Colorado from Virginia. Right on. Just like you said, right straight over the internet. It's it's crazy how this stuff happens. Uh, and we, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, feature some of the the techniques that you're using, or some of the um, the venues that you're using to drive some business further on too. So w- why should you look at digital shirt printing? Why should you get into it? Um, as I mentioned before, there's, that's where the profit is. So an overview of it, I have recent data on this, and um, screen printing and uh, uh, garment decoration overall is a huge in- huge industry, 23 billion dollars in the United States, and today. Garment printing is still mostly screen printing, but that's slowly being eroded by digital screen printing. And if, and if any of you are familiar with some of the large performance houses out there, you know that there are people spending $25, $30, $35 for a custom shirt, just a one-of-a-kind one online. But the challenges that are in common here is that production equipment can be very costly. So some folks may be looking at this and saying, wow, $10,000, 20000 30, $40,000 for this. And that can cow a person who uh, is not a savvy business person. Um, new technologies require often that there is a learning curve, that there's a training period. You have to become familiar with the software, the design software, the ordering interface perhaps, the RIP software, and looking at the firmware of the actual machine that you're using for production. Smaller jobs um, are always crushing your margins down to almost nothing. And a lot of you on the call probably have made a lot of sacrifices uh, just to get that client in the door and to keep them interested in your offerings. There's always that need to attract new clients, and so you're spending a lot of time marketing, quoting, and having people turn down your quotes. You also want to always maintain that very high competitive edge, and so how do you do it through customer service? Especially if the service has a lot of competition or if the customer perceives that your offering is a commodity, then you have to deliver on the customer service side of things. And that's very time intensive and can cause a lot of stress. When it comes to outsourcing, <clears throat> you have um, to worry about things like lead times, shipping times. If, if, you, if you want to uh, print on a new substrate for a customer that you don't have in stock, and you tell them it's going to be five to seven days before you can get it in, the customer is going to walk away from it. So, um, f- you know, fulfilling some of these orders is very painful sometimes. But these are common challenges for um, everybody in the imaging industry. One of the things that we offer um, for Managent and that we propose is that a person look at a high volume digital apparel printer. And why is this why is this uh, conducive to good business? You can actually use it for multiple product lines. It's not just for T-shirts. It can also be used for polo shirts, for hoodies for canvas bags, for folks who are printing on promotional products. The profit margins are very high in this area. And, and the reason for that is because if you have a reputable supplier for your blanks, people expect to pay a higher higher um, price for these things. The more custom that image is and the, more, the smaller that short run is, the more people are comfortable with parting with their money. Their, their price sensitivity is actually quite low. Um, I'll get to the screen printing thing in a bit. Now, another thing about having a, a direct garment printer in-house is that you can attract all types of new business, not just shirt orders. As Andy just explained, he had a couple of examples of this, that folks are coming to you, um, they may come to you originally for shirt business, but then you actually introduce them to your full array of, of services, full array of products, and boom, they, they um, order from you, they order a sign or they order a banner. I got There's my another customer. Your biggest customer? Who 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 is that? That that's that's who my biggest customer is. Down, believe it or not, it's in Carolina, not just over the border. Basically, mm-hmm. I sent them a couple of one-off shirts, and next thing you know, it turned into magnets, uh, trade show booth stuff, uh, banners, you name it. And mm-hmm. I haven't got any shirt orders from them. The funny part is, <laughs> but it became my biggest one of my bigger customers just by doing. We it. have. We have some customers who say that putting um, uh, cu- their customer logos or whatever their product is, and they actually put them on a T-shirt, and they hand them to a, a customer, maybe for embroidery, maybe a screen printing customer, maybe a, a sign or banner customer. They'll actually take that that customer's you know logo off their website, print it on a shirt, hand it to them when they when they pick up the rest of their order. Um, yeah, and you know, you business that way. 
Yeah, you're only talking three bucks, so it's not really a whole lot of money out of your pocket. I do it all the time. It works. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, another thing that, <clears throat> that that makes that so easy is that you're looking at very quick turnaround and fulfillment, and you can even personalize a shirt, put somebody's name on the left chest for them, and it's a personalized gift. It costs you about three dollars worth of materials and labor. And another beautiful thing about this is that you're stopping the outsourcing. You're you're cutting out the middlemen. You're cutting out that loss margin, and you're recapturing that. And we're talking about not 10 percent, not 20, but 30 and 40 percent margins that you can recapture because you're printing. And we've got customers all day long who will testify to that. So why do you have a unique advantage? if you're a sign maker, large format printer, or even a commercial printer, because it's inkjet technology. The maintenance needs, the maintenance routines that you're doing, the graphic software, the fact that you're using a RIP, these are all just very common elements. And if you already understand graphic design, it's, it's not a big leap to modify graphics to print really nicely on different types of fabric substrates. You're also offering, you're already trying to offer a one-stop shop. As a sign maker, large format printer, um, you're, you may be even doing some um, digital press stuff. Um, Andy is a great example of somebody who is uh, a one-stop shop in his location. And this is just filling out the, the full menu of offerings. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> Andy, you told me once that you've, you've actually printed menus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah, even going along this, I mean, even on that, it's basically, I, I always get designs. It's kind of funny. I get a lot of designs from people over the Internet from, from custom ink. Mm -hmm. And I, I find it hysterical because my pricing, you know, is way under theirs, and I'm still doing, you know, they always ship it. You know, for whatever reason, they use their designer, and then next thing you know, I recreate the artwork, I charge them for the artwork, and I'm still getting that. The deal because the shirt my my cost is a lot higher, so it's a total easy. Very easy to go after, even though they're doing all the advertising. It's very easy to go after. Wow! Like, so, so it's almost like it's a, like it's a big ship and you're traveling in their wake. Correct. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so, um, you know, we were talking that you you have the potential to drive larger margins, <clears throat> and that's including your the time that you're spending on preparation, printing, and curing as well. So that's not just materials margins. That's um, your, your all-in, fully loaded cost. So the other, another nice thing is that it takes up a small footprint. Now, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit of an eye chart. But if you look at those two photos, the top one is inside the fifth wheel trailer. And the bottom is Color Image Designs. They wrap that trailer, and they take that to events, take it on the road to fairs and 10K runs and whatnot and um, different types of sporting events. And they open up the awning on the side, and they're offering both signs and customized uh, um, promotional products as well as custom T-shirts, one-off shirts right out of the trailer. And you can see over by, you got Tim, you got Sue, and you got Deanna, and right behind them is the Empower. On the right side, they're rolling Versacam, and you can see all the different uh, vinyls that they can print on. So if you've already got a customer base, as a sign shop, and you've already got your customer's graphic assets on hand, boom, you just you have a brand new line of business uh, instantly ready to hit the road. And as we said before, Andy was talking about, if you're, it costs you about three bucks to differentiate your business with a free custom sample. Why not? It's going to take you five minutes to bang out a, a free white shirt for a customer. They're going to come back to you. They're going to refer you to other, to other uh, clients. Now, Another common thing is people ask is a smart business person is always going to look at the, the long run and say, what's the payoff time for this? And what's the return on investment inside of 12 months, inside of 18 months and 24 months? We're talking about 90 days to pay off on a top-end printer on the, the, the highest uh, um, uh, model, which is our Empower 10i, MP10i series. Uh, so 90 days is, is kind of the um, the 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 target that we aim for. Some folks go stretch it out to six months. Some people are achieving payoff in 30 days or less. It all depends on the volume of your business and the size of your, you know, your marketing arm, how strong is your marketing muscle, and how big is your um, customer list. <clears throat> you know, do you promote the offering and, and so forth. What kind of results are you seeing off of this? Well, if you can see, this is an example of one print uh, from a customer. 
our inks are, are well known for being, being really vibrant and having a lot of lasting uh, staying power through many washes, and very good sunlight resistance, and has a soft hand. If you could reach out and touch that shirt, you would not be able to distinguish where the ink stops and the shirt begins because this is not screen printing. We are using a direct-to-garment ink, which is a water-based pigment ink that is applied with the inkjet directly on the fabric. The cotton, the 100% cotton of this shirt, really absorbs this ink very well, and it's almost a, a, like a dye sublimation effect. But that ink becomes a permanent part of that garment. And if you want your customers to be really happy, you let them know this is a special thing. You want to wash this in cold water and make it last for a long time. It should outlast the life of the garment. So the Empower itself, uh, we claimed that the Empower uh, MP10 is the fastest single platen direct-to-garment printer. It is the fastest direct-to-garment printer in its class. We mentioned the return on investment. We offer a lifetime technical support and training. And there are many different things you can print on besides t-shirts. And not the least of these points is that it is designed, uh, uh, developed built, uh, final assemble, um, training, support, sold, everything out of our headquarters in Costa Mesa, California. So you know that if you have any kind of issues with your computer, or with, pardon me, with your, with your printer, you're talking to somebody right here in Cal Southern California, um, you know, absolutely fluent in English and absolutely clear and um, ready to take your call live during the day. Not just email support, but live phone support. One of the advantages of the Empower I series. Now, this is our most popular selling printer our printer model. What's great about it is that um, it's very durable and it's very easy to use. If you actually see us at a trade show and you come up and you say, "Can I give that a shot?" We will turn it over to you and say, "Here you go. Pick a graphic, load the shirt, drop the hoop on, and push print." It is that easy to use, and um, I've done it before so many times. We are the only folks who actually have salespeople in our trade show booth, not techs. So our salespeople are running these printers constantly. You go to anybody else, and you're going to see a tech running that printer, not Anajet. We're all doing it ourselves. I'm the marketing director. I own one of these printers. I know. Um, some other nice things about the Empower is that we have free lifetime software and firmware upgrades so that um, you're always going to be working with the latest and greatest in terms of firmware, in terms of RIP software. Uh, I mentioned lifetime tech support. I mentioned that there's no setup fees. It's not required that you um, buy uh, a technical visit to have them set up the printer in your shop. It's, it's not mandatory. You can actually set this up, begin printing yourself. And to that end, we just released a one hour, 50 minute um, Anajet University online. It's posted up on YouTube. You can go look at it anytime you want to. Andy, I don't know if you've had a chance to see that video with Tim on it. Yeah, I have. Okay. Well, not all of it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... <laughs> well, you are you're already you're already well advanced past the beginning stage, anyways. Um, yeah, I can't and, remember uh, last time I called tech support. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you're a bit of a technician yourself, and that's one of the the beautiful things about coming from where you where you do with the 25 years in science in, in the commercial printing industry. <clears throat> So um, a little bit more things about the I-Series. Folks ask, why did you call it the I-Series? Well, it's, it is a new generation of the Empower. We do um, present with better ink flow. Um, there's better control. And there are more robust uh, components that we've added. And color fidelity is even better than it was before. And we have uh, ICC profiles in the RIP software. So you're looking at really strong capability for, for matching. We, it's not. Uh, one for one with um, uh, Pantones, uh, but then you know that's the direction that things seem to be evolving in. But uh, still, the, the, the fidelity on color is, is is superb. You can even see on the screen what it's going to look like before it comes out. So um, let's move forward through this one. There's a little bit more. I mentioned about the components. Um, this is important for folks who may have looked at um, Empowers in the past or who may be working with an older generation. There's this, we're constantly trying to improve for durability's sake, for quality's sake, so that uh, y you, know, you have uh, a printer that's highly available and uh, very easy to maintain. So what is it about the software I keep talking about, this RIP software, Anarip, it's 
pretty cool. Um, even people who uh, are not familiar with, with uh, garment decoration at all, they take a look at this and they say, okay, I can actually see a preview of what the image is going to look like on the shirt. And we call that our true view, and you can see it on the right here. So on the left side is, is the original color representation of your graphic that just dragged and dropped in, and on the right side is your true view. And this is what it's going to look like when you actually combine the ink with a darker substrate. And you can make adjustments to this before you print it. So there's a built-in ink cost calculator and a whole lot of other great features built into the rib. Print times, folks ask about speeds and feeds, always. These are times that are um, uh, representative of a graphic, let's say uh, a 10-inch high graphic, 10-inch square. It'll take 20 seconds to be printed out on with the MP10. There's overhead time that you can adjust uh, where we're doing the wiper blade cleans. And so you're looking at a realistic capacity, 400 to 800 white shirts output per day on the MP10. Um, Andy, have you had any recent white shirt orders that would be close to this? Uh, uh, I did not long well, uh, uh, actually, towards the end of the summer. It yeah, was for a uh, in Pittsburgh. It's 200 shirts. And the 200 shirts. Oh, you're breaking up. <clears throat> okay, well, your break, signal's breaking up. It was uh, 200 shirts, a front and uh -huh. back, a pocket print, and then a full back. So that's basically 400 impressions because you're doing front Correct. and back. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that, that can be that can be pretty time consuming. Okay, you're breaking up again. <laughs> Just want to get to the real important point. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, let me know if you get if you if you can connect again or if you need to call back in. The Sprint is uh, the model that's been around for now, um, coming up on uh, four and a half years. This is uh, the number one selling direct to garment printer that we know of in the United States, and there are thousands of customers running the Sprint worldwide. So we first released it in June of 2009. It's actually on the second generation, known as the Rev B. And this is a light and portable printer. It's only 85 pounds, and it's something that people can take on the road with them. It's um, a little smaller footprint than the Empower. Um, the Empower itself is 180 pounds, so that's a two-person lift, definitely. Folks reporting uh, fast ROI on the Sprint of five months, uh, as long as five months, down to even weeks. And the Sprint is using a different print head. It is not uh, the same industrial strength print head that's on the Empower, which is a Rico print head. Um, but on this one, you're seeing print time still. Uh, a white shirt could take between 55 seconds and three minutes, depending on the level of uh, resolution that you want to achieve and the size of the ink drops that you're using. And still, very, very ambitious and very um, doable uh, um, volumes on this. And if you're printing 20,000 shirts in a year, and the payoff estimate on this print is about 1,500 shirts, you can see that you could be in the money very, very quickly, even with this, this little guy. So what's the business case? These are, are going to be calculations based off of uh, um, all three models. If a fully loaded cost of a printed shirt, you're looking at 2 to 50 to $3. Um, it's definitely going to vary according to the type of discounting that you have. Um, Andy, are you back on? I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, no worries. So um, what I'm covering here is like blank costs and retail pricing, uh, gross profit per shirt. Um, uh, you you have a, a wide range of uh, pricing structure in your model that I've heard. You're pricing some stuff down, even competing sometimes with the screen printing industry. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I had a 50-shirt order, um, just a pocket print. Uh, it was blue. And I did it for 550. It literally took me the 50 shirts was about 45 minutes. So, you know, the the shirt was a buck. Uh, what was it? A buck 70 or no? Actually, a buck 49, something like that for the shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, the ink cost was about two cents per shirt. And so I don't have a calculator. I'm driving. So 550 times to 50. You know, it was a pretty good hourly clip. So yeah, and that definitely. was. Fold it and package and out the door. Well, so we and had a really question. All it really depends on what it is. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Yep, and, and you're 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 basically modifying your pricing depending on the customer's needs. Correct. Yeah. So the estimates that we come up with here are um, we're looking at a, the range of retail pricing, and we're saying that a sprint typically about fifteen hundred shirts to achieve a payoff on a sprint, about twenty two hundred on an MP five, and about thirty two hundred on an MP ten. Um, I've actually modified these up a little bit, and I'll say twenty five hundred shirts with an MP five and thirty five hundred for an MP ten. Um, but still, these are very achievable um, margins. And when I say 75%, that's no lie. We just had a customer who is a retail store who um, he did 70,000 worth of uh, printing in three months at a 68% margin. And he had the data and, and the, 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 all the information to, to prove it. He recorded every, everything he prints. So I was pretty impressed with that 68%. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Really feasible. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not as high as him, but I got about 14,000 shirts <laughs> in, in, in a year and a half. And that's pretty much a one-man shop and doing a bunch of other, you know, signs from routed signs to, mm -hmm. you know, simple banners to product labels to whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really transformed the business. It really has. It's mm -hmm. from that standpoint of repurposing data from mm -hmm. a banner to a shirt, it's no-brainer to me. You know, out of the 12,000 shirts, I've probably paid for this machine four times already. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty pretty uh, accurate as far as the estimate there. And I know uh, we're going to get into your, your, your business specifically um, in just a second because I want to I go along on that. Very, very briefly on extended applications. You, you, as a sign maker, as a uh, banner printer, a large format printer, you're probably not going to be so, super excited about the ability to print on canvas, but something that you can do here is metal foil on garments. That's an, our number one uh, um, aftermarket application that uh, folks go crazy for it. And it adds tremendous selling price to your printed garments. And you're talking about an extra 30 seconds to a minute of, of work to cut the foil to the size of your graphic, and you're adding five dollars to the to the selling price. And people go nuts for this, and it adheres really, really beautifully. Um, some of the markets that you have in common um, with garment decoration, um, if you look, this is just a list of uh, the top markets, and this is coming from SGIA's report in 2010. They do a survey statistic uh, report every year, and I just pulled the most recent one I had on hand was the 2010, and the top four businesses. Uh, that are steady or growing, corporate branding, nonprofits, athletic teams, and schools. And when you see Andy's um, Facebook site, you see Color Image Designs website, you see uh, SignWorks website, these are the folks who are represented. So your customers are going to be the same folks who are buying printed shirts. So again, we're talking business case for um, uh, um, any one of these things, this is actually um, an updated one. You can see, not, ah, there it is, 2,500, 3,500. So Eastern Shore Signs, this is where the, the gold was. Before we launch into this, I wanted to answer a couple questions. Now, Bruce asks a question. Uh, you talk about DTG being in addition to a printing business, whether it be a sign company or a t-shirt company. Do you have clients that run a business exclusively with the DTG system? That is true, and uh, that actually is probably the core of our customer base are folks who bought this as entrepreneurs. They were looking to start a business, something that has a really high profit margin, something that was easy to learn, and it picked up an FP125 or a Sprint. Many of them picked up an MP5 or maybe even an MP10, like in Sue Aspen's case. They, they just started off with an idea and a, a probably a couple of good graphics, and they just took off from there. So we do have several examples of that, and I've got a call scheduled uh, next Tuesday where I'm going to be featuring one such business. Uh, they're known as uh, the Soul Project, and they're based out in uh, Laguna Beach, California. So um, that's just one example. I've got um, uh, many other folks who just started it out of their garage or out of their living room, uh, out of their dining room, and they just wanted it to... Um, uh, build up a kitchen industry here. Or uh, another example is folks who have uh, somebody who is working in the home and who is able to run the printer an hour or two a day. Uh, that was another uh, 
pretty common use scenario. Uh, there's another question coming from Bruce that says, if a graphic is done in Illustrator, does there need to be computer design or edit time after importing it into AnaRip? No. It depends. Yeah, yeah. Normally, normally it should be just drag and drop and print. Andy, what's where yeah, been your example? It, it, it's 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 out of Illustrator. You just export it as a PNG file. You can make it transparent. It's pretty seamless. It's very easy to do. And basically, as soon as you ex export it to a uh, you know PNG file is what I use because it's transparent. Import it to Anarip, place it where you want to, and hit print. And mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing it on a dark ship, then you're adjusting under base, maybe on reds or blues. It really depends on the color. Sure, there's a few different scenarios, but it literally it's it's seconds. Once it's done in Illustrator, there, there's really you know you're talking 30 seconds to get in the Anarip. And I'd say that uh, if you're expert in Illustrator. Um, and you, once you, you've handled the Anarip, it is such a piece of cake. All you have to know how to do is how to create a transparency. And if, if you know how to create transparencies or save your background as transparent, uh, you're going to have even better results. So, um, I prefer people giving me Illustrator files versus Photoshop because it's less, you know, the only time you have, if it's a Photoshop file, you have to go in there with the magic eraser uh, if it's not a very complicated drawing and then you can basically clear the background and then save it as a PNG file. Um, so a little bit longer. The question, the question on that one for you, Andy, is that have you um, found yourself uh, doing a lot of free graphic design for customers? Do you charge them for that? No. I do charge them, but it depends on the job. If it's a 100, 100 shirt job and it's going to take me really 30 minutes to design something real quick and then approve it, no, I'll use it. Yeah. Yeah. If, um, another three shirt, if it's three shirts and uh, you know it's a half an hour, yeah, I'll charge them. Rusty asks a question: What graphics program is most commonly used before going into Anarip? Um, I'll I'll lead off with that one to say that if you've got Adobe Creative Suite, that's the best place to start from. Adobe Elements is another good place to start from. Corel Draw, but um, uh, um, there are other options out there. As long as the final format of your image is a JPEG. It's uh, a TIFF, it's a PNG. Uh, we work with PDFs and bitmaps as well. Um, yeah, you, 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 any you, other you, things? Sign, quite honestly, you could use Sign Lab if you wanted to because you have all those abilities to export them out as a PNG file, PDF file, TIFF file, JPEG file. So uh, that in itself can work for if, yeah. if you don't have any of the higher end ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of folks are, are, are starting out. They don't want to spend 1200 bucks on, um, uh, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator. So there is a, an option for that right now. It's called um, Elements, and that's under 100 bucks. And that doesn't have uh, the capabilities of the other Adobe Creative Suite uh, uh, programs, but it's still got pretty much everything that you need for modifying graphics and adding text. Well, in my opinion, on that is, you know, don't sell yourself short. Spend the extra money, get the good application. It's definitely <laughs> worth it. So, Rusty asks a follow-up: If a customer sends you a high-resolution JPEG, uh, can that be used? Yes. And I'll I'll add to that that um, if your customer is giving you something that's at least 150 DPI, uh, you're probably going to have a pretty good result on on a T-shirt because the substrate you're, that you're printing to itself. Uh, is not the highest resolution. Um, having something at 1,200 DPI on a T-shirt is overkill. You don't need to have that 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 size of file. But um, you want to aim for 300. 300 DPI is probably um, the sweet spot. 600 is even better. Um, and our printers, our empowers go up to uh, 600 DPI. Um, is that you know what kind of resolution are you usually printing in, Andy? Uh, so sometimes I get as low as 72, but I have another. I got another program called PhotoZoom. It's just basically a uh, pixel multiplier with a bunch of different algorithms. And actually, it's a 150 dollar program, but it works. It works awesome. I even use that for my signs. Okay. But most of the case, I can get away with 150, 200, no problem, and it comes out great. I mean, even if you put a 300 DPI and you res it up, it's not going to look any better than what you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's tricks that you can play, um, and it just is a matter of uh, practice. And 
looking online for um, how-tos, and there's a lot of a good advice out there as to what you can do if you need to res, res up a really bad graphic. And we even have, uh, uh, there's a, a customer out in Seattle uh, that, that actually uh, typically does digitizing. They can take a really, really lousy graphic and digitize it for you overnight and get it up to a nice vector-looking graphic um, for something like $25, $30. And it's well worth it for a large job sometimes. So let's talk about you, Mandy. Uh, you've been in printing industry since 1989. You're based out in Cape Charles, a uh, uh, city of a population of about 1,200, 1200 people. You're doing signs, routing, final cutting, and of course, direct garment printing. Um, Andy bought his uh, first Empower back in March of 2012, and According to that's when I got it. That's when I got it. Yeah, I, I pre-ordered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took a while for Andy to get it from from uh, yeah. all the hype that we we put out back in 2011. And, but overnight, um, in his experience, it grew all of his business 35 percent on the top line. And since printing the M, uh, since buying the MP5, he, you have done now 14,000 garments. You said over, yeah. So uh, you had a banner month in June of 2012. Just in that month, it was 21,000 in total sales for a one-man shop. Yeah, and then uh, this year, July, it was uh, 23. Beautiful. So you have good seasonality where in the summer months, it really, it really blows up? Yeah, and that's actually changing. Uh, yeah, it's actually turning more steady throughout, throughout the time. Matter of fact, I, I started as a you know, out of the house guy and mm -hmm. built my business up. This device definitely helped me achieve moving out into a, I just moved out into a, a, a commercial building. I had to, I had no space left. Right. Um, and basically the business has grown, basically the sales have tripled or quadrupled in the last year and a half. And that's just because of the combination of the being able to do t-shirts, signage, product labels, whatever, Any, anything that's dealt with some sort of printing on some sort of substrate. That's the only difference. It's just a different device. So if you've got a wide format Roland or uh, any of these devices out here, the, the only difference is you're instead of printing on vinyl or canvas or whatever, you're printing on a T-shirt. Same mm -hmm. principle. Um, and the only difference is you're doing it in repeat and doing it in larger volume. Mm -hmm. And the margins are probably not nearly as high as the um, uh, sign side, but mm -hmm. the volume definitely makes up for it. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing larger volume, you then tend to make you know you know a couple of grand if you're doing. I just uh, what did I do? I did a couple of weeks ago. I did uh, uh, for the YMCA of Southampton. I ended up doing. Uh, 200 shirts, and that was a pretty decent deal. But I had to do that. That that's a whole nother. Uh, I'm I'm being sort used as a source for mm -hmm. other companies to do other companies' work. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm the middleman in a goofy way. <laughs> you and, and but, a, a bunch of others who are who doing the yeah. same thing. And it's worked Let's, out. So. So um, there's a question about, you know, you mentioned that you expanded your space, and uh, there's a question about what, what are the environmental requirements for the printer? Um, All right. This. Uh, yeah. You got the environment, what I actually moved into, the building I'm in is an old bank, so I'm in the actual, the, the director of is basically in a manager's office, which is basically 10 by 12. That's where I have... My, all my computers, it's easier because it's a smaller space. I can control the humidity. This definitely, you want to keep the humidity up as best you For, can. It, minimum of 45% is, is yeah, uh, what we recommend. Yeah, I keep mine about 50, 55. And, you know, the regular you know temperature, I keep it anywhere from 65 to 72, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. upon the season. But well, we had another it's in a small area, too. Yeah, yeah. If it's, if you, if the more you can contain it, the easier it is to control that humidity. And also, I recommend keeping it away from any heating elements or anything that gets very hot, like the heat press. Um, um, we've seen folks who put the heat press right next to the printer, and that's a bad, bad location. 
it didn't affect <laughs> it didn't affect mine because I kept the Amelia. Up. But mine yeah. literally all I do is turn around and start behind me. Well, see, so that's a great location. As long as I'd say it's as long as it's about three, four feet away minimum, uh, you're you're sitting pretty good. Um, uh, they're asking. Uh, Lynn asks another good question. Could a printer be used in a mobile environment? Um, yes, and, and we're going to get to that um, after we if we clear through this. Um, I'm going to have one more slide talking about Eastern Shore signs. We're saying that your monthly revenue is, is about 35% T-shirt printing, and uh, that you occasionally hire somebody in to run the printer for you. Is yep. that correct? Or to um, Right, right. And uh, your top customers have include restaurants, they include the cities and counties, and I think that one of your first orders was actually the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, I got uh, three Chamber of Commerce where I live. One's in the county, one's both counties, and then the other one's Chincoteague Island up in um, northern, the northern tip of the Eastern Shore Peninsula, mm -hmm. which is a huge vacation spot. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, Big T-shirt so, business up there. That's awesome. And and uh, um, do you are you actually delivering stuff, or are you just shipping it up there? Uh, depends. Depends on how much it is. Mm -hmm. Within an hour, or so if, if it's a lot, I'll drive it up, or have I'll pay some to drive it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper than delivering thirty boxes of shirts. Well, I saw I have a, uh, an example here of a, of a typical job for you. You had a 100-shirt order for a wholesale nursery, and you just did, did a, a white shirt with a pocket front and back print, and it would have been a, equivalent to an eight-color job for a screen printer, and you priced it really low. You priced it at about you priced it at $10.55 each piece. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the, the margin on that had to be pretty substantial for that particular It was order. still still decent margin. I mean, the white shirt, you mm -hmm. know, they're always on sale. Believe me, they're always on sale. Everybody's trying to sell you something. And the, the white shirts are the cheapest by far. About mm -hmm. a buck and a half, and then you're looking at in cost even on front and back, it's less than 50 cents. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your time of putting it in and getting it out. So even 100 shirts, even two sizes, 200 prints, it's taking you four hours to do it. Mm -hmm. So four hours was at uh, was it, what I charge? I guess it was over a thousand dollars, thousand fifty, twelve hundred dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, hundred shirts cost me under two hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and then the ink cost was another twenty, thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. So the rest of it was uh, you know my time and effort. Yep. Yep. Well, you are well so, compensated you know, for your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even if you, well, even if you hire someone to do it and spend the four hours doing it, you're paying them. Even if you're paying them fifteen bucks an hour, which is being generous. Yeah. Um, in most places. Yeah. Um, you're looking at you know sixty bucks. So, yeah. and the rest yeah. of it's profit. Mm, that's a good, good, good sign. Um, and uh, so the margins there, the jobs are there. <clears throat> And I'm just showing them right now um, your actual Facebook page. Um, and uh, if you're looking at the screen, you can see he has a great wallpaper that shows the, the range of signs that he's doing. Um, but also, there's a, few, he has, there's a few t shirts on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, you have actually um, uh, really great um, photo galleries. So I, I like to show that off sometimes too, the range of stuff that you have. Um, and, and this is a great business builder, by the way, just as a business tip. If you don't have a Facebook site, you need to do it, and you need to post photos and videos of all the stuff that you yeah, can I just, do. Yeah, I just, I just picked up a customer today because they saw it. Yeah. Simple. That's great. I mean, it's free, too. Great. Yeah, and then you're basically leaning on your existing customer base to help you build uh, your, 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 your customer base out. There's a sign works uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina that I mentioned earlier, and um, there's a video that I'm going to try to jump to that shows them how quickly that they're able to do a hooded sweatshirt. So um, let me jump over to that. On the web. Oh, it's already there. Sign works. And this is the video.
So I don't know if you can see it really well. It is a video, so it's not going to paint in very fast. What they're showing you, though, on the screen is this is an MP5, and it's laying down the white ink right onto the, a pre-treated hoodie. And then once it's done with this white ink, um, it, then it's going to do the CMYK pass. So what does this entail? The, the work here involves, first of all, they have a source graphic. that They drop that into Anarip. They knock out a transparency if there's any kind of background in it. And if there's anything that's red in the ink, they can actually turn that red into a transparency with the medicine dropper function. So now there's the CMYK pass has been dropped on. They're putting it onto the heat press, and they press it for about 90 seconds. When that pops up, that's a geonite press, 90 seconds at about 330 degrees. <clears throat> and then using a craft paper, there it is. And it printed right over the zipper which I think is important that you see that printed right over the zipper, and there it is. And that is SignWorks. Let me jump out of there. And um, here's Andy's site. This is the one, the one thing I wanted to point out, that Andy is great with adding the photos. So here's a, uh, an example of a very recent uh, um, job that you did. And that, looks, that actually looks like a photographic uh, oyster, Andy. Oh yeah, the one I just did that today. That is, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it looked like you set an oyster shell right on the shirt. <laughs> that's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, but it's 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 part of, it's part of the uh, image, yeah. But uh, that was the whole effect with the shadowing and all that to make it look more dimensional. Yeah. So, um, cause that's great. That's great. I'm gonna uh, jump over to one more here. Uh, oh, the other thing about that, it, it, I don't know if you've done a lot of hoodie jobs, but I'm hearing that people paying $10 for a blank on a hooded sweatshirt, and then they're retailing these things for sky-high prices, and, and folks are paying it. They're happy to do it. Yeah, I'm um, getting 25 to 30 bucks. It's beautiful. Uh, the, another example is um, this kind of answers the mobile question. Um, there's a company called Color Image Design, and it's combined with Road Warrior Graphics. They're based out of Lutz, Florida. Um, the owners are Sue Aspel and Gene Wodzicki, and I forgot Heather. Um, Heather is also a, a partner in the business. And Sue and Gene are the ones who go out on the road, though. And they're doing signs, shirts, vinyl lettering, and they're even doing things like corporate identity packages. So they're a hybrid. They have a brick and mortar business, but they also have a mobile unit where they're going out with a, a van and pulling a fifth wheel trailer, going to all types of events. Somebody asked, what kind of events can we do? Do you do street fairs, swap meets? Absolutely, yes. And I actually have an article that I printed back in April in Impressions Magazine. You can see it online, or you can hit our blog to, to read the article to see how folks are doing this in a mobile, a mobile setting. These folks began, Gene had a, a lot of years in the sign industry. Sue didn't have any experience with uh, uh, um, garment decoration, but she invested in an MP10 and now they're expanding up to three MP10. So they'll have two road units and one corporate uh, headquarters unit. And this is just off of their Facebook site. So you can see that they have t-shirts. They print signs. They do um, uh, um, iPhone cases now that they have uh, dye sublimation. And they have really uh, cool printing capabilities there. And these are just examples of um, recent jobs that they've done. So let me jump over to their actual uh, site real quick because they have a great photo gallery here, too. And you can see, um, that's an example of a trailer wrap that they've done. Um, these are some examples of some of the shirts that they've done. And uh, that's an example of they are at a fair right now. These folks took their photo, Sue added a vignette around them in uh, Photoshop, and then they added their own custom message to this. I'm going to tell you right now, my guess is that Sue probably charged them 30 bucks per shirt. So super high margins for folks who are getting custom pieces on demand. Now, I don't know how long the graphic design piece of it took. It could have taken them a couple of minutes. But once you've got that image done, you drop it into Anarip and print it, you're talking about three minutes from soup to nuts for shirt number one. Literally from dro dropping it into Anarip, rip it, print it in 65 seconds, press it for 40 seconds because it's a white shirt in its three minutes to, um, uh, to make that kind of a, a margin. Awesome. 
There's another uh, question about mobile, and that is, um, uh, how did Ford use the MP10 at SEMA? Um, I should, should share this with you. Uh, Ford actually rented an Anajet Empower MP10i for use at their trade show. So we're talking about a, 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 an open-air event, and we had hundreds of people uh, get customized shirts that they were customizing right on the spot for people. It was a one-of-a-kind shirt for the SEMA event. If you're not familiar with that, that's a large automotive uh, specialty um, products trade show. They had a 40,000 square foot booth, and they had the line was two to two and a half hours long every day of the event. And we just ran the printer constantly. Um, we probably would have pr printed hundreds, maybe even a, a thousand more if we had had multiple printers there because they wanted to customize each individual print. So it was a fantastic result. Somebody asked what site was the video on. I pulled the, the video for SignWorks. Um, this is actually on the SignWorks North Carolina on Facebook. SignWorks with an X, NC. You hit their site. It's, it's a, a, um, a place page. And it's actually off of YouTube. Um, Joe asks a question, what kind of pressure is needed on the heat press for curing? So um, Andy, are you familiar at all with, with what type of pressure you're using on your heat press when you're curing? Yeah, not a whole lot. It's uh, light to medium. Sometimes light I'll medium. back off on it, depending upon the shirt. If it's a sweatshirt, I'll back off, especially if it's zip, zip hoodies. Sometimes if I'm doing it on the back, I'll unzip it so the zip mm -hmm. doesn't transfer to the uh, front or I'll offset so, the front. So it's not a whole lot of pressure. Right, not a whole lot of all, pressure. All, mo and yeah, most of these, all these heat presses come with a pressure, uh, pressure screw or some sort of pressure setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, and uh, just to repeat again, SignWorks is the one that, that uploaded that one print video. Um, let me go back over to the deck. So um, real briefly now is who's not a fit for DTG? Now, I think when we're talking to the sign industry, we're talking to folks who are uh, sign shops who are producing banners in large format and uh, vinyl, and they're doing um, uh, you know, all types of, uh, um, uh, all types of uh, large format graphics. These are rare instances. But if you're just getting started in the imaging business and you're not comfortable working with graphic software, um, that might not be a, a, a good uh, fit because if you don't uh, are not handy with working with Adobe Creative Suite already, if you're not handy working with Elements or just basic graphic design, and you're a sign shop, you might be putting yourself at risk. But the, yeah, this is a rare, rare case. Graphic design software is actually pretty easy to learn in general because there are many sites out there, even the vendors themselves that have tutorials that will show you how to use it. Anajet, we have a two-hour um, Anajet University that will actually show you some of the, the, the tricks that you need to do to optimize an image. And even if all you know how to do is literally drag an image from a file folder into Anarip, you can still modify it uh, to a large degree within Anarip. Um, you can uh, alter the contrast and color and play around with the underbase. There's many things that you can do that we'll show you how to do in Anarip. But if, if you never touched graphic design software before, you start off with something very simple like Adobe Elements, um, and it's very easy to learn. Now, if you're locked into using competitor technology, some folks already have, for example, something that they're using for garment decoration. You might say, well, I haven't finished getting all that I can out of this investment. Well, that may be true, but it also may be true that it's time for you to upgrade because your production capacity with an MP10 far exceeds anything else that's on the market right now. I think, Andy, you could attest to that. You, you started with an MP5, and then you've upgraded to a 10. Correct. Yeah, I had, well, I didn't have to, but it's just, it's just everything I do is based on, like, hourly stuff. So basically, I needed to get the shirts out faster so I can get more work out of my shop. Right, right. So you, you basically upgraded because you needed to get capacity. Correct. Uh, yeah. Um, there are some folks out there that don't want to invest in garment decoration technology. Um, you know, that's fine. It, it's true that there is an element of um, artisanship to this. It's not uh, you know, just simply drop a piece of paper into a printer and then hit print. Uh, we all know that that's not true when it comes to signs either. 
Um, but I would say that um, uh, the, the the amount of artist, art, artisanship that you need to learn, I think it's comparable to uh, pretty much any substrate that you need to learn. They all have their own personalities. Um, uh, if you hate performing maintenance and you don't want to have another device that you need to go in and, and do nozzle checks and head cleans, stay away from it. <laughs> but if you have the discipline and you know how to walk your dog, if you know how to walk your dog, you're not going to have any trouble uh, with this. It's the same type of discipline. Once a that's day, you're going to that's, that's a good that's analogy. A good analogy? Cause sometimes, yeah, because sometimes you don't feel like walking a dog, so you don't have to. Uh, if you don't feel like walking a dog, you shouldn't own a dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you're too busy to learn and practice, uh, learning graphic design, working with the RIP software, working with the printer itself, um, understanding pretreatment, I would say that the flip side of that is, um, you, you know, if you like learning new stuff, you need to learn this because we do have a lot of opportunities for training. There's the online training. We do have uh, um, customers all over the country. Um, many of them would be happy to even show you um, how, how they do it and uh, what the routine it consists of. And uh, we have uh, Anajet Online, which we just published to YouTube very recently. Um, the more you're printing, the, the faster you're going to learn. Uh, so even if you don't have a bunch of orders piling up on your computer, you should be definitely practicing and playing around with different graphics. You might find yourself uh, just on a lark pulling something off of Facebook or other social media and creating a t-shirt that, that you sell 15,000 pieces of it. It's crazy how that has worked out for some of our customers. Um, if your primary strategy is to outprice your competitors, you're always winning on the price war, but your margins are terrible. Um, with DTG, if you want it to, to pay for itself, you've got to price it for profit, not for giving it away. Um, Andy, you probably have been painfully aware of this. Um, you know, giving away shirts, people asking you why why you have to charge twelve dollars and not five. So um, I've got some more questions for us. I'm going to move to the end here because we have a lot of questions, and I want to be able to to address these. Um, uh, here's a good one from Lynn. We said we pressed it for 45 seconds on a white shirt. How long does it take for black shirts with the white underbase at a 300 DPI? It's going to be the same time for all black shirts. And what we recommend is that you do a hover for 10 to 15 seconds because you've got two layers of ink. You want to evaporate off some of that water in the water-based ink. And then 90 seconds at 330 degrees for a black shirt. For a white shirt, you can do 356 degrees at 40 seconds. Why would you want to do that? Because you're going to have um, faster production speeds with that white shirt, and you can do higher volumes of um, printing and curing. Now, if you have two heat presses, then the problem goes away. and You can uh, print up uh, just as fast as you can press them. Do we have other links to uh, previous webinars? Yes, we do. Joe, we have uh, many different uh, um, webinars archived. They're on our YouTube site. So if you go to YouTube slash youtube.com slash Anajet INC, you will see a bunch of archived webinars. You can also visit our website and look to look for the events page and look at the whole list of archived webinars. Can any of the printers print on vinyl, magnetic, and plexiglass? Um, in general, we can if it's a flat surface and it'll take uh, it'll take an impression. We can print on it. Now, do we want this to compete with Roland Versicams or other types of large format sign, sign printing devices? No, we don't necessarily want to compete with that. Uh, it's just an option. So if you actually um, purchased our extended media kit, that has a capability to pre-treat for glass, for metal, and, and for many other surfaces like ceramic tile even. Um, Lynn asks a really great question. What's considered a long run? and um, a long run, what would you say is a long run job for you, Andy? Still on board? I think I may have, I may have lost them here. Hold on a second. Well, I'm going to respond to that one. A long run job or one that's more extended, think about 50 shirts plus. That's something that could be a good size job for you. A short one might be something that it's five or six pieces. Um, now, there's, there's a more technical question, Lynn, that I'm going to have to take offline with you when it comes to talking about a six-color silk screen. 
Um, how much time per shirt does it take to unpack shirts, pre-treat, load on the platen, heat press, pack for shipping? It's a good question, Mardin asks. Um, that's more of an operational question, and that's going to vary really greatly depending on the size of your order. So, so if you want to build in all those extra um, operational steps into it, you can do that. You just need a stopwatch. So if, if uh, you've done garment decoration before, you know how long it takes to unpack them. Um, Pre-treatment I could speak to, let's say you have a case of shirts of 72 pieces. It'll take you about an hour to pre-treat those shirts with a Wagner power sprayer. You um, can line dry those or put them into a conveyor dryer. Now loading on the platen is a matter of 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Again, that's something that comes with practice. And if you have a, a high volume of shirts, your efficiency is going to go way up. Heat pressing. Heat pressing is actually irrelevant for the purposes of calculating operational time. Why is that? Because if you have two heat presses or three heat presses, it doesn't matter how fast those shirts come off the printer you're going to have a ready press to put them onto. Now, uh, I have a video online, it's on YouTube, Mardin, where we did a speed test. A customer came to me and said, I bet you can't print 100 shirts in an hour, and I said, I bet we can. Send me your graphic. I need something that's going to be 10 inches high by 12 inches across. Well, he sent me something that was 13 inches square, so it took a little bit longer to print. I did 25 shirts in less than 18 minutes, and that was starting from dragging the image into the RIP software then pushing print and curing. So imagine that you have the capacity to jam out 100 shirts in an hour. Uh, that would be pretty good. Um, and your profit margins could be pretty strong for that. I did that with two heat presses. And I had actually two operators. One was loading the shirt onto the table. And the other was taking the shirt off the table, dropping it onto the press. And so they basically just traded off. It was really smooth and seamless. And you should see the video. It's gotten on quite a few views. Last question. And I'm going to let you folks go and say thank you to Andy Buckholtz uh, for graciously um, uh, appearing today on our, our webinar. Do we have any distributors in Eastern Canada? Uh, yes, we do. As a matter of fact, if you folks are um, looking at us from outside the United States, I must advise you that we sell direct only in the United States, and we sell through distributors in most countries um, outside the US. Canada is definitely one of them. And uh, if you want to get their contact information, please visit our website. It's anajit.com slash distributors. And with that, it's now 11.04. And I've, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend with us. Please join us for future webinars. And also know that we're going to be at Fast Signs, if any of you are franchisees, we're going to be um, uh, uh, exhibiting at the Fast Sign Show in Anaheim in February of 2014. Thank you very much. Have a good day.